Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my new series about C++ microcontroller programming. This course is primarily intended for people who know the basics of microcontroller programming. At least how to toggle bits and registers and what are timers and interrupts. The knowledge of C++ is also required because I'm specifically going to show how to use C++ zero cost abstractions for embedded development. So during the course we are going to develop our own relatively low level C++ library, which partially uses CMCs and is essentially its convenient C++ robber. I'll use the STM32F4 discovery board, but the skills shown are applicable for all the STM microcontrollers and probably for embedded development in general. One of the aspects of the uniqueness of the course is that there are no other systematic CMC examples for STM32F4 microcontrollers in the world, let alone code explanation. The exception are my lessons in Russian, but I suppose you will not understand them. To work with this controller you definitely need some papers. Here they are. The first one is reference manual. There is the majority of information we need about the controller in the systems and peripherals. The second one is datasheet, and we actually need only a microcontroller pinout from table 3 in this paper. The third one is STM32F4 discovered board pinout. Its contents correspond to the name. For example, you can find how the LES are connected in this paper. All of these papers and the code from lessons are available in my GitHub repository. Just follow the link in the description. So let's get to the point. As you could have noticed, this is Microsoft Visual Studio. To make convenient integration with flash loader, debugger and other utilities for embedded development, we need Visual GDB plugin for it. It can be downloaded from an Arabic website. Because, guys, if you really think that it makes sense to learn Chinese, to stay ahead of the world and read research papers before the others, I'll make you disillusioned. Nowadays, it mostly makes sense to learn Arabic. So you shouldn't have problems following instructions in the readme file. Fortunately, they are in English. To start with, we'll follow the traditions and blink a lot, but with nice abstractions, no matter what Linus Torvald says about them. He said, It sucks. C++ is a horrible language. It's made even more horrible by the fact that a lot of substandard programmers use it. To the point where it's much easier to generate total and utter crap with it. So when we have installed everything required, it's time to apply the Visual GDB project wizard and create a new project for lessons. We are going to use none of SPL, HAL, LL and other heresy. We are creating the SPL project because it's easier to clean up there. To start with, let's simply write the LED blinking code using CMCs. I'll choose the LED my board connected to the 12th pin of port D of the controller. Actually, there are four ones on my board and they have four different colors. Let's delete everything from the main file and start writing the new clean program. Firstly, include the header that represents all the header-only CMC's library. Its name comes from the model of our controller. You should be getting used to the pain when you are programming STM microcontrollers. So, for energy consumption reasons, even after the CPU clock is enabled, you should individually enable every single peripheral. For example, for GPIO port, which means General Purpose Input-Output port, you should also enable it individually. And the problem is that to find out which operations with registers you should perform in order to enable GPIO port clocking, you need to jump to another part of the document, to the part called RCC, which means Reset and Clock Control. If you didn't hear about this entity, you obviously need to read the world datasheet to find it. Ok, this is not the best example of the pain, because almost everybody knows about it. But the point is that it's really common during STM microcontroller programming, when you need to perform unpredictable operations with parts of the controller, descriptions of which are situated far away from your one to make your peripheral work the proper way. Believe me, there are many opportunities to face the pain. And we'll take those opportunities in the following lessons. Getting to the point, we should enable the clocking of port D. Taking into account that most of the work with clocking is performed by writing bits or registers, let's go to the corresponding selection of the reference manual and understand that we should write this line of code in our main function. Now let's go to the GPIO section of the manual and explore the available settings. The first register, mode register, is responsible for the pin mode selection which is configured individually for each pin, which is pretty cool. The possible modes are input, output, analog and alternative function. We'll obviously select the output mode for the 12th pin and write this line. The second register is called otyper, output type register. 
it allows us to configure the type of the pin structure and to use either two transistors or one transistor with a resistor. It doesn't matter for us because we are not plugging the pins in parallel, so I leave the default settings. After then, the manual offers the user to set the proper speed of output. Well, I understand that blinking LED is a very difficult task in computational terms, but actually we only need the low speed which is set by default. Don't modify the register for now. The next one is the pull-up pull-down register. It is made to prevent undefined voltage on pins. The problem is that the output pin consists of some kind of transistors and if a MOSFET transistor is closed, the pin output context is not connected to anything and has undefined logical level. Because it depends on electromagnetic interference, which is almost unpredictable and is typically between 1 and 2 volts for me. It is not useful now because the pin is connected to the ground through the LED and the resistor. And to light the LED, the current of at least 25 mA is required. Believe me, there cannot be even anything close to this if we are speaking about the interference. Let's leave the default value of the register. So we've finally got to the most interesting registers for now. They are input and output data registers and to toggle the LED state we only need to manipulate the corresponding bit value. So here's a full basic example. To blink the LED let's change the LED state by performing the bitwise XOR operator with mask and wait a bit. After that go to changing the LED state again and again. In an infinite loop. Oh my god! This is the best LED blinking I have ever seen. It is easy to try out various C++ features and apply them. Here's an example of using STD array, which is a static array allocator of the stack, for custom sequential LED switching. We can choose any order of the LED pins we want. Oh my, it is an extremely genius LED sequence! Here is another example. We are using C++ pseudo random number generator to choose the next LED to turn on. Mind blowing! This is the randomest sequence I have ever seen. Ok, that is definitely enough for the first lesson. In the next one I'll show you the basic structure of the CMSYS library and taking it into account will abstract the operations with the GPIO for the convenience of the subsequent use. Good night, ladies and gentlemen!